yeah, I heard that. But one thing that uh, Jonathan brought up in the last <clears throat> the last segment was Strike Tober. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. Uh, American workers are finally, after all this time, God bless labor, God bless the working class, standing up for themselves because of, uh, there is a need for labor. Uh, let me give this some context for all of our listeners out there. Employers of all sides are grappling with an acute worker shortage amid what is being called this pandemic era's great resignation. It has become increasingly clear that people with jobs aren't all that happy either. From healthcare to entertainment, neither 100, nearly 100,000 U.S. workers are either striking or preparing to strike in a bid to improve working conditions. New data signals that worker unrest is growing. A Cornell labor action tracker shows that there are more than 180 strikes that have been recorded this year, and over 24,000 workers have walked out of the job just this month. Uh, This all plays out against the backdrop of an economy that was said to be bouncing back from the economic downturn. But of the strikers, more than 10,000 John Deere workers went on strike for the uh, first major walkout in more than three decades. Uh, The Bureau of Labor Statistics, which record only large work stoppages, has documented 12 strikes involving 1,000 or more workers. That represents a huge jump from when the pandemic started started okay almost uh, two years ago thousands of other employers and workers have recently faced similar scenarios including kellogg's who are on strike and nabisco who recently ended their week-long strike but the bigger picture seems to be that workers are exhausted Mm. from this pandemic and a tight labor market that has resulted in burnout and frayed nerves uh, at the kellogg cereal plants in michigan tennessee pennsylvania nebraska 1,400 workers have been on strike since October 5th, but now over 100 members of the building construction trades union will return to work at Kellogg's, uh, oh yeah, at the, the factory in Nebraska while the broader strike continues. Uh, now, the thing that's, that's really uh, notable about this, Rev, is that the Gallup poll has shown that American approval of unions is at its highest point since 1965, with 68% of Americans approving of labor unions. And so, you know, I end the show every week. God bless the working class. God bless labor. And I've been waiting for this. A lot of people have been waiting for this on the left, the actual left, not the sellout corporate liberal left, like, you know. Like like that caller earlier accused uh, me, me of being a part of right. the Democratic Party corporate left. Um, you know, not the you know let the boy in the dress go into the girls' bathroom left. Not that left. These organized labor, working class people need to be treated better. At jobs. I've had jobs where I, tr- I was treated like crap. While I was working for seven twenty five an hour, and Ham mm-hmm. was was working next to white supremacists. Literal white supremacists with the racist tattoos side by side. Wow. And then I'm sitting there working next to him for 725 an hour. I'm going, I can't believe this is my life. You know, we get a, a 15, 20 minute lunch, mm-hmm. and then you have to go back and they they burn you out. They burn you out at those temp jobs and they give you so little time to eat lunch. You by the time you get back to your car, it's time to go back to work. Uh, the, the amount of criminals who are on those jobs. I worked with a, a lot of people in, in low-wage jobs who were ex-convicts, had just been out of prison, et cetera. You know, this is what, uh, this is what being uh, essentially working class in America is nowadays, Rev. Like, it means that the, the, the type of working conditions and the people you're working with and the people who are yelling at you, they have clocks now, too. I won't, I won't, let me just say this before I turn it over to you. I know a lot of the older vote, older uh, people listening probably did not have this, but now in the last decade or so, they've had like huge, they have clocks over the workstations at sort of these temp jobs and labor really? jobs. Yeah, they have clocks that and, and they have like counters that are counting every time you do whatever your performed task is. And if you don't do a certain amount of the task before that clock reaches, say, two o'clock, or 145, then that's it. You're gone. I got fired that way from a few jobs. So it is what it wow. is, Rev. 
this is what American workers have been dealing with. <laughs> they are clocking. I mean, it. Wow. Yeah. I, I can remember working a job at uh, uh, Abbott. It was called Guided Thin, mm -hmm. where they did, you know, sort of like keep a record of how many uh, stints, you know, you would produce by the end yeah. of the day. Right. And versus how many, you know, were messed up, things like that. But I can't say that they fired you because you didn't get your hundred stints an hour. Yeah. <laughs> wow. They'll get, they'll I mean, get they you. might say, hey, you know, you know, what can we do? You know, pick up the page, yeah. you know, look at it well. But if at a certain point in the look, the man's putting in work, this yeah. is just how long it takes, then that's just how long it takes. Right, right. That I actually was at the place. I want, I want to say the name. I, I hope I got it right. Uh, Midwest Products. It was called Midwest Products. I want to say it's imported. I, I didn't fin I didn't uh, do the the exact amount of, and it wasn't by a lot. It's not like I was. I had to use the bathroom or something. And so by the time I came back, it was I was rushing to trying to get through, rushing trying to get through. I missed it by a few. I by the time I got home, like. I got off at 3.30 because the job was 7.30 to 3.30. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got home, they had already left a, a, a message on the answer machine like, do not come back. They were like Kamala Harris. Wow. <laughs> don't come. <laughs> they were just like Kamala Harris in that wow. sense. Like, don't come. Whatever you do, just don't come. <laughs> yeah, I have never been very fond of temp agencies. Yeah. Now, I, I know some, there are some people that, you know, speak well of them. I've never felt good about them because here, here's the deal. The company makes a contract with the temp agency, as as you know, and the company get you know the temp agency gets paid. Yeah. You know your job that you're getting paid seven twenty five an hour for apparently is actually worth to that company mm -hmm. twice that amount. Oh yeah. So I've always said, well, wait a minute, why don't you just hire a guy at fourteen fifty an hour? Right. But the answer is, it's very similar to the way the situation is in Las Vegas with the unions. Basically, they use the unions in Vegas as the hiring agency. And in other parts of the country, they use these temp agencies yeah. as the hiring agency. So they don't have to deal with all the hassle of interviewing people and so on and so forth. And it's worth it to them to outsource that element of HR. And they don't even... Think about, well, you know what? We're paying these people garbage, and they know that they're getting paid garbage, yep. and we're paying this other company so that we don't have to deal with talking to these people, with getting to know them before we hire them. Right. They're just a pawn that we, we hire, and if he doesn't make our quota, we'll, we'll let him go and pull another file in from the mm -hmm. temp agency. Right. And, and then add to that, you're working with the temp agency. In many cases, you don't have any benefits, you you have no retirement or anything. Um, it, it was the only good experience I had was again working at when I was working at Abbott. Now it's Abbott because if you worked at at, at that company as a temp uh, for I think it might have been six months, they would bring you on board. It, it was like they used the temp agency as the probationary period, and if you made it through that probationary period. They would transfer you over, and then they would even include that time towards your vacation. That was pretty good, but that was because that company chose to do it that way. It wasn't because the temp agency had that factored into the contract. Right. right. Oh, oh, we have. Oh man, it's time for another break. Caller, please. If you the caller who's on the line, the callers who are on the line, please stay on the line. We will, we will bring get, you in. We will get to you, but we have to take this break uh, before we get out of here. All right, folks, we are back here on WLTH 1370 AM. We got like a, a quarter of an hour left. So, again, do not wait till 7.55 and after when we are wrapping up the show to call. If you want to call, say say something to us. Say something to us now. Like, like this guy. guy. Yes, like this guy. Hello, caller. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, good man. Hey, now. You're all doing all right. We're, We're doing good. good today. We're good. Okay, good rep. Now, I'm going to talk to you. But I know you brought up that unit. Mm -hmm. I'm good, Rep. I'm going to just give it to you straight. 
Okay. You're dealing with nothing when you're dealing with that junior. That, that junior, I mean, back in the 60s, sure it was strong in the early 70s. But now that junior would say you and anybody else. That union is nothing. You're dealing with, uh, trust me, when I say jump, it's half jump. You're dealing with a tortoise, dude. Wow. Look, look, man. That company get those union officials, take them out there. Now, listen to the words I use. They found my pop, a tater ship, I didn't say butt on it, and a mud on the sandwich. <laughs> they had some fools come back out there. The company been good. They been good. You can tell me they don't look. They don't have nothing. They don't want nothing. We had a guy over there named Jim Robert. That's why back he, that that why lied and did so much wrong. When I say, look, man, some people just can't even stand up straight on the lie so much. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, they got more black fire out there than anybody that I know. Now, I don't know why people think that, look, sure, they can be good on some things, but other than that, they have to get those black fire. I'm telling you, that's, what you uh, that's, that's my honest opinion. Well, they've, they've been, you're, you, uh, you're absolutely right in some instances. No, it ain't no absolutely right. It's the truth, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you saw at the Nabisco, I, I believe it was the Nabisco strike that where they, where they actually uh, felt the the workers felt absolutely betrayed. Stop, by... stop. That's what I'm telling you. I'm talking about the steel right here at USC. Ooh. Those low down dogs out there, they oh, made yeah. sure they helped get black back. Now, mm. not all this. Look, I, I could see if I had heard them. Okay, mm -hmm. I could see if I had read them. I'm telling you, baby, I've seen it, I lived it, I was there, and I was with it. So yeah. the whole thing is, hopefully, that you can find you a powerful attorney in that Chicago loop like so many have done, and take them to court and them low down dogs to buy down like a crying wild dog. Mm -hmm. They get in front of that federal jury, they don't do all that. But I'm telling you now, all they want to do is help get those black guys. And you know, I, I don't understand why people won't get together and go to hire an outside attorney and sue, them, sue that dude. Look, the company's going to do what they do. I mean, the union's going to do what that company say do. And I doubt. That's mm -hmm. I told you now. The whole thing is nothing but a cheap dinner, a five dollar dinner. And you know, you know how the game goes. They might be doing it. They might be drugs involved. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, what it could be. No human being with that frame of right of mind. And you get in front of, if you wish you get in front of that son of a jury, they sit right over there and with their heads to the throat. They can't even look up. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm just letting you know. Yeah. You can talk about those unions, but I'm letting you know what they're doing. You don't have a union at that level. Right. You have dogs. Right. All right, I'm going to let you go. I know. I, I, I absolutely agree with what he's saying in the sense that uh, I've heard about the Steel Workers Union, but also the United Auto Workers Union. After Reagan sort of gutted those the, the union movement in the 80s, a lot of the, the people who replaced the original people have become sort of extensions of the, the corporation itself. It, it really is unfortunate how labor unions have been uh, gutted. But what I wanted to get to before we get out of here really quick is that I wanted to, to give a lot of the audience, you know, some people may have been in the labor union a long time ago, I mean, uh, in the labor force a long time ago, but are no longer in the labor force. Um, this is what American workers are dealing with today in 2021. This is why you see 68% of Americans starting to approve of labor unions because of the sort of conditions that have deteriorated because of, like he said, a lot of corrupt, like, there, there are some corrupt guys in, in the, at the top, but mostly because labor unions themselves have become so disempowered since the Reagan era. Uh, the U.S. ranks dead last among industrialized companies, uh, I'm sorry, industrialized countries relative to employee benefits like health care, paid leave, vacation days, unemployment, and retirement. This is from, not from socialist.com or something. This is from CNBC. Okay, this is the corporate media. A lot of people don't believe some unless it comes from the corporate media. This is what CNBC has said. The Czech Republic, Latvia, South Korea, and Mexico joined the U.S. among the five least generous countries. Obviously, countries like Denmark, the Netherlands, Finland, Sweden, and Switzerland were the top nations for, for worker benefits. The U.S. is the only advanced nation that does not guarantee paid vacation time to workers, according to the Center for Economic and Policy Research. By comparison, Europeans get at least 20 days of legally mandated vacation days, and some countries require at least 30. We're also the only industrialized nation that does not offer universal health care. We already knew that. But America does spend more on health care than other high income countries relative to the size of the economy. We talked about that a few weeks ago. I think you were gone for that week, Rev. But millions of workers have leveraged 
the uh, the U.S. employment system during the COVID pandemic, and so the the narrative has been that oh man, this sort of the the benefits going to unemployed workers were so generous, and that's why people weren't going back to work, and Amer Americans just don't want to work. But here's what uh, the, the American people are not being told that the American unemployment system is one of the least generous systems relative to the amount and duration of benefits. For example, in Denmark, they pay 90% of a worker's lost earnings for up to 104 weeks. The US generally replaces half of the worker's wages for up to 26 weeks, okay? Uh, real hourly wages in the United States have stagnated for middle income earners and have fallen from low income workers since 1979. That's right mm -hmm. before Reagan. Growth in average wages in the United States has been lower than those in any rich countries. Mid to low income workers in the United States earn less of the nation's total income than workers do in, in, in most other industrialized countries. Another data set shows that the income on, earned by the bottom 50% of earners has dropped significantly since 1990, particularly in the United States. The U.S. spends less on social expenditures as a percentage of GDP than in other rich countries. The total, sh and this is another propaganda piece. I've even heard it here on, on WLTH. All you hear is people, welfare, all these Americans, don't, all these people don't want to work, all these lazy people, and, you know, Uncle Sam is taking care of them. And I've always heard black women particularly slandered as being welfare queens, mm -hmm. even by black men a lot of times. You know, and I hate to hear that because I know, again, I've always said mother is the most important job in the world. I really believe that. But the t share of total federal spending on the poor in the United States has declined from more than 70 percent in the early 90s. Now less than 50 percent of federal spending on SNAP, uh, TANF, TANF, EITC, CTC, Medicaid, public housing, and social security goes to people below the poverty line. So it's it's gone down 20% what they spend on the poorest and most vulnerable people. Um, and the US poverty rate is high after taxes and transferred when compared to other the to other similarly wealthy nations. So when we're seeing like these workers, particularly like most of the people who work at Walmart are on benefits and things like that, like it's not because people are, are are lazy like we we need to stop that right wing pro, you know that right wing programming that american citizens are just lazy and that's why all the the, the you see people on benefits when the american system of labor in this country has been broken for a long time and people are not able to afford just to live on what they get in this country ref mm -hmm. you know it's interesting um there are ways that you can, in a sense, live better at that lower end. But part of it is because when you live at that lower end and that's all you know, you learn how to survive in that way. You learn how to cut corners. Mm -hmm. uh, you learn how to make those stamps go further. You, you become sensitized to sales, you know. Mm -hmm. When they talk about, for example, oh, that person on welfare buying steak. Well, you know, that person on welfare or on food stamps waits until the steaks are on sale. Right. And then buys, you know, New York strip steaks. Right. Now, New York strip steak, I mean, I, I, I'm, hey, uh, New York strip steak is a nice cut of steak. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's not a ribeye. Right. <laughs> it's not filet mignon, but you get it on sale, you cook it right, it's a decent steak. And so what's wrong with somebody getting it on sale? Right. Um, why should a person, matter of fact, eating beans and rice all the time really isn't healthy. Uh, right. You know, and, 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 and the thing is, we live in the United States. Poverty is relative. No, the poor in America are not as poor as the poor in Haiti. Right, right, right. Yeah. But poverty is also relative. Mm. You know, when you're living in a place where you're, you're blasted 24 7 with images of prosperity and success and this is the good life and you're having to count ebt right. you know and having to parse out you know working two jobs to make sure you've got enough to to be able to buy 
the things that EBT might not buy. Right. Um, or make sure you've got enough money to cover the the rent because uh, you know uh, Section Eight doesn't. Act, I don't think Section Eight pays a hundred percent. No. You know, so you still got to come up with some. Right. And 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 on top of which, and this is the part that a lot of people don't don't know about, or aren't aware of, or don't think about. The hoops you have to jump through to qualify for that stuff. Oh yeah. The questions you have to answer. Yep. The time you have to spend. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, most people would much rather have a decent paying job that met all those expenses and ensured all those things were taken care of than have to answer all those questions to get the kind of health care that you get from Medicare or Medicaid or, you know, and they tell you what what sort of treatment you can get and what sort you can't. They tell you what kind of glasses you can buy, you know, all mm -hmm. these things. And yes, if you're getting help by the government, then, you know, he's the one who, you know, the one who uh, pays the bill has the right to call the tunes. Mm -hmm. But that's the trade off. Right. When someone when someone is quote unquote giving you money, they get to tell you how to spend it. Right. Except when it's child support. <laughs> oh, that's a whole you you gonna that's get the another, you gonna get the you gonna get the phones ringing and we gotta get out of here. <laughs> All right, folks, this was a great show. I loved. Uh,